everybody and welcome back to Rara's Adventures. I hope you are all well. Today we are visiting Portsmouth Doric Dockyard. We are here today to share what to expect whilst visiting and to share some of the history as we go round. Reading their website there are a lot of things to be put in place for people with visible and invisible disabilities. Visually impaired visitors, they have information guides in large print formats. So they also offer sensory resources, including tactile plans and print uh, tiles and printing of the ship. Visitors also welcome to handle certain artifacts, both historical objects and replicas. Parking, there are 15 disabled spaces available in the Portsmouth Historic Dockyard car park located in Aldenbury Road approximately 400 metres from the dockyard entrance. Unfortunately there is no on-site parking for the Mary Rose Museum or Historical Dockyard. There is a Mary Rose buggy service. The Mary Rose Museum is located 500 metres, 550 yards from the entrance to Portsmouth Historic Dockyard. If you are visiting the Mary Rose and unable to walk up the site, we can come and pick you up from the entrance gate in our buggy. Provided by the Motor Culture Limited with a grant from the Bushier Hilton Foundation. This buggy runs most days. If you'd like to use this service, please ask when you arrive at the visitor's centre. Booking in advance is not necessary. The museum has a fully accessible toilet with adult changing facilities, including a hoist and adjustable table. They offer hands-on experience for visitors given them by members of their team who are fully experienced and trained. They can also provide a short introductory guide in simple guide to the Mary Rose. The light levels in the museum are kept low for conservational purposes. So if you have any issues, you can talk to a member of their staff and they will help you with your journey. Here in Impaired Visitors, there is an audio loop system in the expedition spaces. They also provide transcripts and subtitles for the audio visual content in most areas. All guide and assistant dogs are most welcome. I will leave another links in the description down below so you can check them out. So we're gonna go in and walk around, do lots of filming, and we will be doing some voiceovers as there's quite a lot to cover here and we wanna try and cover as much as possible. Don't forget, if you've only just joined, thank you. And don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up and hit the notification bell that will really help support what we are doing so let's go history of the mary rose and the birth of the royal navy quoted from website henry the eighth was an enthusiastic shipbuilder whose pride in his army by the sea would see his fleet grow from five at the start of his reign to 58 by the time of his death in 1547 while he may have had many ships, it is the Mary Rose that is remembered as his favourite. Notably, the life of the Mary Rose coincides almost exactly with the reign of Henry VIII. Before the development of Standing Navy, English kings relied upon requisitioning merchant vessels in times of need. This was certainly cheaper than building, maintaining and manning ships in times of peace, but it was inefficient and difficult to mobilise. With threat of Scotland to the north and France to the south, Henry VIII began to build his navy as soon as he came to the throne.
Boathouse 4. The building was constructed in the remembrance period before the Second World War and has been restored and converted into Boat Building Skills Training Centre and is the home of the International Boat Building College, Portsmouth. This college is training a new generation of students of all ages in the technicals of tradition, boat building and other related skills that are still required today to build and conserve wooden boats. Built within the magnificent history building overlooking the Boat Building Skills Training Centre is a new exciting expedition, The Forgotten Craft, which tells the historic stories of the small boats which were the backbone of the Royal Navy. From the wooden cutters that ferried Lord Nelson to and from his flagship, to the cockle shell heroes in their canoes and the powerful motorboats that helped to win the Second World War. As you go around you will see there are lots of different interactions and it is accessible with a lift. There are two levels in this part and on the top floor there is a cafe if you need to stop but don't forget to try out some of the interactions. Harbour Tours Portsmouth is still the home of the modern Royal Navy and taking the Harbour Tours offers unrivalled views of Britain's modern frigates, destroyers and helicopter carriers, as well as historic buildings and the dramatic skyline. The history of the British Navy at Portsmouth dates back 1,200 years to its earliest days under King Alfred the Great in the 860s. This wide natural inlet into the coastline is a flooded river valley protected by a deep narrow entrance on two sides of the dockyard here and at Gosport which makes an ideal harbour. Planning your harbour tour. Please note that harbour tours may not operate every day depending on the weather and will be operating a reduced service upon reopening in line with the government guidelines. Please check the harbour tours office on the dockyard for the most up to date timetable. While we welcome one and all on board the harbour tour, push chairs and buggies must be placed in our buggy parks due to health and safety. These are located close by to Boathouse 4 and inside Boathouse 5. If you are unsure about locating these, please speak to a member of our team before queuing. Harbour tours are included in Ultimate Explorer tickets only. However, tickets can be purchased through the Harbour Tour office on the dockyard on the day. Accessibility. Out to sea. You can combine your visit on land with a trip at sea by hopping on one of our harbour tours or taking a water bus to our Gosport site. Two manual wheelchairs are available on the harbour tour service depending on the vessel and the electric wheelchair users can switch to a manual wheelchair which they can collect at our visitor centre. Pre-booking of those spaces can be arranged by calling 0239-2839-766 or Solent and White Line Cruises on 0198-356-4602. Unfortunately, the water bus service to Explosion Museum of Naval Firepower and the Submarine Museum is not accessible for wheelchairs. Depending on the demands for spaces on board the vessel, it may be possible to take a folded manual wheelchair onto the vessel. There are a couple of large steps onto and off the water bus. However, you can access those sites by car. We were lucky enough to go on both the water bus and the harbour tour. The harbour tour was really good. They also have toilets on tour in case you need to go and a little drinks and food bar if you get a bit peckish. HMS Victory is the Royal Navy's most famous warship, best known for her role in Battle of Trafalgar. The Victory currently has a dual role as the flagship of the First Sea Lord and as a living museum to the Georgian Navy. The visitors experience on board HMS Victory at Portsmouth Historical Dockyard as Nelson's famous flagship from the Battle of Trafalgar is bought. Trafalgar is now bought alive with a handheld audio guide. Accessibility. The HMS Victory contains step stairs, rope banister, low ceiling, narrow and low doorways, low light levels, and uneven floors. It can also be slippery on the upper decks when wet. There is wheelchair access to lower gun deck where a DVD 
call runs subject to availability and audio guides are available. Royal Navy Submarine Museum. Assault all your senses by walking on board HMS Alliance, the only remaining World War II era submarine, and take a journey through every decade of her service. Take a peek through the working periscopes and see, hear, and even smell how life was lived under the sea. HMS Alliance, based at the Submarine Museum in Gosport, is not accessible for wheelchairs, and like the submariners who served on her, visitors will experience dark, cramped spaces with low ceiling heights and trip hazards. We welcome families but the nature of our ship does mean that pushchairs are not permitted on board any of our ships. Accessible toilets and facilities. Accessible toilets are available in the National Museum of the Royal Navy Boathouse No. 7, Action Stations and the Mary Rose. Adult changing facilities are available in the Mary Rose sailboard toilets. Portsmouth Shop Mobility Scheme hire powered scooters to members of the public with limited mobility and these are available at our visitor centre at the entrance of the dockyard. These are sometimes available in, uh, in adverse weather conditions. Booking is recommended and this can be done via email or phone details will be in links below. HMS Warrior 1860 The Great Warrior is an icon today as much as it was 150 years ago during the age of steam. The largest and fastest of all Royal Navy ships, HMS Warrior's fame worldwide made her the jewel in the crown. An I icon that attracted thousands of visitors during the tour of Britain. Now, Warrior has undergone a reinterpretation reflecting what she was like in 1863 by opening up new areas of the ship and bringing stories from the period to life. Accessibility HMS Warrior is accessed via a ramp. Because she is still afloat, the gradient can change with the tides and we would recommend entering at low tide if that is a concern. Like MHS Victory, HMS Warrior does have steep stairs with rope banisters, trip hazards, low ceiling, poor lighting and can be slippery on a wet day. There is however an accessible route marked on the deck plan and includes a fixed banister staircase at the rear of the ship and a stair lift between the upper deck and the main gun deck. Suitable for visitors who are able to transfer themselves to stair lifts. Wheelchairs must be left on the upper deck and a manual wheelchair is available for visitors to use on the main gun deck. Staff are on hand to help throughout the ship. Places we didn't get time to see and film. Victory Gallery, Action Stations, Explosion Museum of Naval Firepower, Dockyard Apprentice, HMSM 33, National Museum of the Royal Navy. There is so much to see and do here that if you are a little slower like myself, you may need a couple of days. I personally wish we took a wheelchair with us as I did struggle and it wiped me out for a week, but it was such an amazing day. All the staff were really friendly and helpful. Any questions they answered or if they didn't know, would try and find out for you. It's such a friendly atmosphere here and they have made it as accessible as possible for all disabilities, visible and invisible. I would highly recommend visiting and if you have any worries or concerns, contact them as they will do their best to accommodate your needs. Hi guys, so it's the end of the day at our visit at Portsmouth Historical Dockyard and we have had a really cool, amazing day here. Lots of stuff that has been adapted for accessibility, which you would have seen throughout the film and heard. We did a lot of voiceover when we visited here. It was half term and very busy. So we thought the easiest and safest route was to do lots of filming pictures and voiceovers. We'd like to say a massive thank you to the Mary Rose and Portsmouth Historical Dockyard for letting us come along today to visit, to share what to expect before visiting. If you've only just joined, please hit that subscribe button, notification bell and thumbs up as that really helps support what we're doing and also a massive thank you for hubby for doing all the filming so hope you enjoyed and i've put all the links in down below and we'll see you again very soon lots of love and take care bye